a separate set of books. In case of a separate set of books, like I mentioned before, usually a joint bank account is open. Money is put into the joint bank. So joint bank account, a jointly operated account, all cash inflows and outflows. Whenever cash is put into the bank, bank account is debited. When money is taken out of the bank, it is credited. Finally, the balance in the joint bank account would have to be distributed to the co-venturers. So there is a joint bank account is open. Money is normally deposited. Each of the co-venturers actually brings in money like a capital contribution. It is put into the joint bank. Expenses are met from this joint bank account. Proceeds, any sale proceeds or any income is also normally deposited into the joint bank account. Then next, a joint venture account is prepared, which will ascertain the profit or loss on joint venture. All expenses of the joint venture are debited to this joint venture account and all incomes credited. Therefore, this joint venture account is in the nature of a nominal account. Another interesting point here is that there is a joint venture is for a specific venture or a short period of time for a specific duration. We've already mentioned the joint venture accounting is on a liquidation basis and not a going concern basis. Not a going concern basis. So there is no difference between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. What does that mean? Suppose I buy paper, stationery. Normally, in a general business, Money spent on stationery is taken as a revenue expense and debited to your profit and loss account because that paper or stationery is expected to be consumed within a year. But when we buy furniture, when we buy machinery, we expect this furniture, we expect this machinery to be used over three years, five years, etc. And therefore, we do not charge the cost of machinery or the cost of furniture to the profit and loss account. Instead, it is shown as an asset in the balance sheet since the benefit of this machinery or furniture will be received for a long period of time. But in a joint venture, there is no such long period of time. If whether we buy furniture for the joint venture, whether we buy machinery for the joint venture or whether we buy paper and stationery for the joint venture, we buy materials for the joint venture, whatever money is spent for the joint venture is treated as an expense and debited to the joint venture account. Expenses are debited to the joint venture account. It is like a profit and loss account, but all expenses, all expenditure, anything we spend on account of, joint venture, whether it's for machinery, whether it's for materials, whether it's payment of rent, whether it is payment of salaries, would be debited to the joint venture. Similarly, incomes would be credited. Incomes are credited to the joint venture. So joint venture is in the nature of a nominal account and it will tell us the profit or loss on joint venture. Next, we also have the co-venturer's personal accounts, which is similar to capital account. Any contribution, any money, any money which is brought in by the co-venturers would be credited to their account. And if they receive any money, it is debited to their, any money or goods, then it would be debited to their account. It's a simple policy of debiting the receiver and crediting the giver. This, of course, is personal account. The balance at the end of the accounting, the balance in the co-venturers' accounts would represent the money which is due to them or may be receivable from them. Based on this, 
on the understanding that normally there are three accounts the joint bank account the joint venture account and the co-venturer's personal accounts we can proceed to understand the accounting entries